Hi guys, just a quick video to show you how to use the uh, STM32 cube tool to help you find a part that has the features that you need. So if you go in here to new project, you'll see this uh, MCU selector. And this is meant to let you select the part that you want to use to then configure uh, in the tool. And, and that's outside of the scope of this video. But what I want to show you is how to use this peripheral selection thing over here and these little filters up at the top to filter the list that you see over here and that'll help you figure out which parts support the things that you'd like to have. So if you look over here you see a bunch of peripheral options and you can you can configure this accordingly and it will filter the list over here. So if you want to only see parts let's say that have a DAC you can change this here and you'll may or may not have noticed that the list over here has updated to reflect only the parts that have a DAC. And if you want to see parts that have um, some EEP ROM, unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be, um, huh, it's not over here, actually, it's over here. Um, so not unfortunately, but yeah, if you just cl click that, um, and we want at least, let's say, it's, it's a little fiddly, but we want some EEP ROM, um, but you know, it doesn't really matter how much we have, then we can just ever so slightly kick this over one notch. There we go, one, one byte. And of course the smallest they have is 2K, which, you know, is to be expected. And we can see that those are, um, those are available in many of the L line. So STM32 L0 has what we want. Um, and the L100 value line has what we want, but uh, that doesn't necessarily give us an idea of what the price is going to be. Um, also, if you want to filter by a package, you can do that as well. Um, the, the perimeter searches at DigiKey and Mouser and similar will let you do a lot of this. Uh, but there are certain things that are much easier to find in this, such as the USB options down here. Also, you'll note that um, when I limited by having EEP ROM and having a DAC, certain things have grayed out. And that's letting me know that there are no parts available that are going to have U USB on the go and a DAC and EEP ROM. So um, if I get rid of the EEP ROM, you'll see that those have ungrayed. So it's a, it's a really helpful tool when you're trying to figure out whether or not... Um, you can find a part that you that you want, or what might be the cheapest part that you want that that has what you want rather. Uh, so, like looking at this this part here that has twenty five IOs, um, it's that's probably going to be one of the cheaper options. Um, if you sort by the number of IOs, you can find uh, like these these are going to be hard to solder. But the the um, maybe this this LO X two would be cheap. So then you can just go into DigiKey and STM32 L O and you can see that those parts are, are going to run you um, well if we filter by in stock those parts are going to run you um, about three bucks. So uh, this may not be the cheapest option uh, that's that's another thing to consider. Like, if if um it, it may be the cheapest option with the feature set that you have, uh, but like it, if you see that it's it's mostly available across the L line, you might want to fil uh, reduce your filter if you're not already filtering just by the L. So like so here you see I'm filtering by L zero. Let's uh, get rid of that filter, and we'll put in STM thirty two just L, not L0, and let's see what the cheapest chip in the L series overall is, and once again, we'll limit by stock of one, or availability of one, or you know what I mean. And we'll see that, yes, this, this L031 is the cheapest in this line, and that's a, a nice solderable, well, <laughs> relatively solderable linear quad flat pack. So let's... um. Let's let's expand this a little bit more. So let's look at the STM32 line as a whole and see which which are the cheapest options uh, within that 
100% lined. And no surprise, um, the cheapest is the the F0 line. The F0 line is only a buck. Well, a buck 37, so a buck 50. And it, it, but it's not going to have all the features that we that we want. So let, let's um, let's figure out what it is that we're missing from that feature set. So let's let's take this and let's let's look at only the F um, the F zero value line. So this was the F zero three zero, but um, we're looking at the F zero X, which means you know any of those, and you can see all the various different specific models here. And you can see they all lack EEPROM, and they also lack DAX. Um, they have a fairly limited feature set. These are, uh, as far as IOs and peripheral functionality, they're very similar to the, um, the Atmel parts used in Arduinos. So if you're looking for like an Arduino equivalent, this is an excellent chip for that. Uh, and they even have these, these TS-SOP20s, which are somewhat easier to work with uh, as far as soldering than, than these quad flat packs. Uh, but they have, of course, limited I.O. They only have 15 I.O.s, and many of those are going to be taken up by uh, any of these features that you might want to use. Like, you can't use all of them at once. And you can figure that stuff out once you open the individual chip. It'll actually, well, I'll just show you. It'll um, bring up a representation of the chip and it'll show you which pins are, are you know, usable for what. So let's say that you wanted to use um, one of the ADC ins. If you check these, you can see uh, the pins that are usable for that purpose showing up over here. And if you click on an individual pin, you can see all the various things you can configure it to work as uh, because of the way the hardware works internally, you know, of course, certain things are going to be limited to, to certain pins. Like you can't, you can't necessarily access everything on every pin, but you can, it is pretty flexible. Um, and this is similar to the Arduino in that there are certain pins that you can use for PWM and there are certain pins you can't and, and so on. So um, that's kind of a quick look at how that works. Um, it's, I think it's a really useful way to find parts that you're that might meet your needs. Um, one other thing I can show you real quick: this board selector option. If you're looking for an eval board to play with, uh, this has all the eval boards, and it has a similar peripherals filter. So it'll let you uh, try to find an eval board that has the features that you care about, or you can just find the microcontroller that has the features you care about and then see if there's a uh, an eval board that uses that controller and you can filter the the controller that the uh, board uses from here hope that helps have fun <laughs>